Okay, today what we will do is we will continue with our Java basics. See, what we understand, we understand that what is Java, how to install Java in your system, how to set up your environmental variables, and once it is done, we saw that how to write your, uh, how to create your Java project, how to create a class, and then we discussed about different uh, data types and operators, and also we discussed about your uh, conditional statements okay what I will do is I will be showing you that conditional statements one more time because as I said conditional statements is very important right every time when you're talking about your conditional statements conditional statements are very important so what we will do is we will be talking about that conditional statements and then once we are done then what we will do is we will be talking about that uh, select case uh, that is nothing but our switch case we will talk about that switch case. Once it is done, then today what is our topic is like we need to talk about uh, for loop, do while and time permits. Then we need to start with arrays as well. Okay. I hope you guys are doing your practice as well. Make sure that you are doing practice. Otherwise, it will be difficult for both of us. So till this point, right, we discussed. Till this, your operators and all, we discussed. And then, like, right, I wanted to go with the loop. Before that, let me show you quickly, right, how to create your uh, condition loops, okay? So, how to do that? See, if you want to create a class, right click, right click on that, go to new, new class and give the class name here what is my class name I wanted to give conditional repeat I wanted to repeat my conditional statements click on ok now you tell me I will write the scripts and all. so here this is my class and if you want to write your uh, if condition what you can do is you can declare your variables whatever that variables you are going to compare so what we will do here I will say that my two integers. Now I wanted to implement my if condition. What is your if condition? If see if condition is very simple. If give your condition. What is your condition? Here I will say that a is equal to is equal to b. So what I am trying to do, I wanted to check whether my a is equal to b or not. This is my condition. Now if it is matching then I wanted to do some steps here. See here the point is right, why I am telling this if condition again means right, as a tester every time we will compare this expected value with actual value. If it is matching pass, else fail. So here A is equal to B. Else A is not equal to B. A is not equal to B. So here right A is equal to 100, B is equal to 200. Now what I am doing, my condition is equal to A is equal to B. This is your C. Here right one more point, remember here. One more point here is, see whenever, one more point here, see when I say that is equal, if I use only one is equal, this is called assignment operator. This is your assignment operator. That means here, when you say that A is equal to 10, you are assigning, you are storing your 10 value into A. That is called your assignment operator. When I say that A is equal to is equal to 10, that means you are comparing A value is equal to 10 or not. That is the difference between one equal and double equal. This is your equal operator. Equal operator. Like this. Okay. Fine. Now, right, this is this is like right, this is how you can implement your uh, if condition. Okay, clear. Let me run here. See this Java, right? Java is very easy. Only thing is you need a lot of practice. If you do the practice and if you know Java, then uh, Selenium is nothing. 
right? Only thing is if you know Java, that is that to write, no need to understand the complete Java, only code Java, whatever we are discussing. Next few days, like uh, three three more days, whatever you are discussing, if you are comfortable in that, then Selenium is nothing. Selenium is nothing. Just you can take your uh, files, group of files and configure it, nothing else. Let me run this. So A is not equal to B. A is not. If it is equal to condition is equal to true, it will execute this. Here my condition is not equal. So what it will do? It will directly jump here and it will execute this particular uh, step. Clear? See, if you have any doubt, please let me know. Now, right, see here, right, whenever if you are having one or two condition, that means usually, right, if you are, if you are having like true or false condition, then it is better to go with the if condition. That means if you have one or two condition, then use your if condition. However, if you are having more than two condition, that means, right, like I will get the output, the output can be anything. It is having like more than three values and at a time I can use only one value. This kind of situation use switch case, right? Yesterday I was talking about that switch case, switch. What is your condition, right? My condition, let me say here, string, string month is equal to March. Now, what is here? My condition is month. So what will happen now? What is my case? What happened? Syntax, one second. Where is my syntax? Speech expression, correct only. Case. January. Space. Then what I will do. So month selected month is so whatever the condition you are passing, month is January. You can concatenate as well. Selected month is month. Selected month is month. Okay. And you can use your break. Break means what it will do is it will break your uh, execution. Otherwise it will continue your execution. Okay. Case February February Case February Selected <laughs> Selected month is Selected month is so selected month is this month so like this right now what it will do is right here whatever the condition you are passing whatever that condition you are passing based on that condition 
your uh, script is work. So you can write like all the cases here. You can have n number of cases also. Month is month like this. Syntax is very important in your Java, right? Otherwise, every time you will be getting your error messages. And it is case sensitive too. Selected monthies. can use it otherwise if you ignore also that is fine anyway we are using cases if you are using also that is absolutely fine now default so default is nothing but uh, what will happen is right uh, sometimes sometimes what will happen is right you are passing some value but that is not matching with any of the case then what it will do is it will execute it will execute this line selected month is not correct so what it will do right uh, like right whenever if you are passing that value now whatever the value you are passing here now if I pass this value as much then what it will do it will check this is not the right case this is not the right case then it will execute this case only this will execute this case and whatever the value you are passing on that is not matching with any of the case then it will execute your default yeah let me run see right so this is how you can implement your switch case okay i hope you guys are clear now i am moving to loops right so this loops also is very simple i will tell you let me okay create a new class now what I am doing is I'm trying to explain you guys loops okay loops so here what I will do is right I will be I will be Here, right what I will do is I will be creating the loops and here also what we will do is we will be learning couple of loops right and I get, I hope you guys are already aware of these loops one is for loop another one is do while loop we will learn these two okay we will learn we will learn first for loop and do while loop these two things we will learn do I loop? See, this loops is nothing but see the difference between your conditional statements and loops is conditional statements means if you are having two values and you will compare it and then if it is matching it will true if it is not matching it will go to the else part but here loops means you want to iterate your uh, script n number of times that means I want to count thousand numbers that means right one two three four the, for that what you have to do you have to put a loop saying that please count the values for thousand so whatever that loop you are creating with the condition based on the condition this loop will execute usually loops right we are having like uh, for loop and do it these two loops are fine and especially for loop we will use n number of times remember for loop is a base loop everywhere any programming language and for loop also here is very, very very easy right now for loop means what you have to do for so let me show you that uh, syntax here so if is done for 
for loop is nothing but what you have to do is for loop initialization see i told you in java initialization is mandatory what do you mean by that initialization right in java initialization is mandatory so you have to initiate you have to initiate your variable with your value that is mandatory initialization is mandatory in your java okay initialize the value okay then give the condition expression is nothing but give the condition okay you are trying to execute your scripts n number of times what is the condition what is the base you can give the condition and then increment the values and then increment your values increment or decrement you can use that okay that means right what i will do i want to like i want to print 1 to 100 values that means what i will do i will take my first value is 1 and then what is my condition till i is equal to or till my i less than 100 that means till i is equal to 100 please print the value now what is your uh, update update is nothing but okay you want to increment the value yes i want to increment my value i plus 1 i plus 2 whatever that means you are each time your i value will be incremented by 1. This is how you can write your for loop. So if you see here, if you want to write your for loop, for initialization is mandatory. In integer, initial, initialization means right, you have to give a data type that is mandatory. i is equal to 1 condition i less than 100 i plus plus. i plus plus is nothing but i plus 1, right? So when I say that I plus plus, I plus plus is nothing but I plus one. Both are same. Both are same. Okay. So you can you can also say that I plus one. That's absolutely fine. Now what you are doing? I'm taking like right now. What I'm trying to do is right. I'm saying that I plus plus. Uh, first I into I is equal to one. I less than hundred and then I plus plus. Then see what will happen. Then see what will happen. Here what we will do, we will print the the value is the value is i. Let's see what will happen. If you run this, if you run this, see it will print all the values from 1 to 99 because you said that you want to execute your values i is equal to 1 to i less than 1 if you want to use even 100 also then you can say that i less than 100 less than or equal to 100 then what it will do it will print the values from i is equal to 1 to 100 see this is how you can use a for loop here right if you want to write your for loop this is the procedure clear okay fine now some more some more times right what will happen is you may be using right you may be using your uh, loops inside the loop that means right i wanted to use the loops inside the loops you can also use it that means say for example just imagine that you are working with one table table will be having your rows columns obviously right then what you can do is you can use one one loop for your rows one loop for your columns and then you can work accordingly you can also use your loops inner loops as well so we will use them in the same way you can also use your if condition within that uh, for loop you can do whatever you want now let me have one more for loop int j is equal to 1 j is equal to 1 j less than equal to 100 j plus plus j plus plus now what i wanted to do i wanted to i wanted to print a value i wanted to print a value First give me some space and then add the value as i multiplied by j. I multiplied by j. I multiplied by j. 
that means what you are trying to do right first i is equal to 1 then this loop will continue like first j is equal to 1 j is equal to 2 j is equal to 3 and so on let's take the less number of values so that you can easily see that output also if i take like more number then like it will be a lot of output right you can take n number there is no difference okay then i wanted to give the space for each and every value so that uh, it looks good nothing else right like this. okay fine let me execute this clear this output clear the console run this run this now if you see here see first what it is doing it is taking is equal, i is equal to 1 then i is equal to 1 j is equal to 1 1 multiplied by 1 is 1 1 multiplied by 2 1 multiplied by 3 1 multiplied by 4 and so on up to 100 and once it is uh, 10 only right yeah once it is done then next i is equal to 2 2 multiplied by 1 multiplied by 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 then 3 3 1 2 like see how nicely this uh, coming there so here right what we are trying to do is right we are trying to right we are trying to using that loops within the loops and one more thing also here i will do now what i will do you can also use your if condition also if i is equal to 5 you can also use n number of things here right there is oh, oh. if i is equal to 5 that means right i wanted to print only these values if i is equal to 5 then only i want to print the value i don't want to print all the values see what will happen so you can also use like uh, conditions within your for loop as well see clear everything let me run once again so this is how you can like write use this see it is not executing everything let me let me remove this space under let me remove this so this is how you can work actually right this is how you can work that means right let me clear the output so when you run this what will happen you said that whenever my i value is equal to 5 then only i want to print the values click on run click on run see it will print only 5 table it will not print everything 5 10 15 25 up to 50 because right you give some condition here your condition says that like right i want to execute this for loop and within this for loop i want to use some more condition as well you can use your conditions and then it will print only this uh, 5 table only this will use only 5 table only ok fine like this ok now what I will do is now I will be showing you how to use your uh, do while see here also do while also same thing right this is also loop only and even your do while also will be having the same uh, format that means do 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 what you want to do I want to do the value of I is int i is equal to 0 ok ok int 
I is equal to I plus one also you see here right you can use your I plus one or you can use your uh, I plus plus both are same. What is my condition while I less than 10? While I less than 10. That means what you are trying to do here first I is equal to 0 print this value then increment I value by 1 then okay if I is equal here right now my I value is 1 1 is less than 10 yes that is correct then what it will do loop will keep on continue loop will keep on continue okay keep on continue let me run this loop will keep on continue based on this condition remember based on this condition loop will continue see till your right if you observe this this loop is continuing i is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 5 9 once your i value reaches 10 10 is not less than 10 right because 10 is equal to 10. So then what it will do is it will come out of that loop. So what you have to do is right when you are writing your uh, do while loop, you have to give your do loop and while giving what you have to do is you have to provide the condition. Based on your condition it will work. Clear? Is it clear? And one more thing you can also so this is your do while loop. If you have any doubt, please let me know. And one more thing is, what you can do is, here if you observe here, right, here right, every time I am incrementing the value. You can also decrement this value as well, right. You can also decrement. Decrement also will work. That means, now i is equal to 10, i less than or equal to this one. And then you can also say that minus minus i. Both are same. Both are same, right? When you say that uh, i is equal to 10 and then start your loop, continue the loop and then we will comment this one. We will take this again once again. First, let me print this values. What is the output we are getting? When you run this, then what will look first 10, 9, 8, 4, 9, 8, 7 like this. It will print. See how it is printing? What? Why it is not printing the values? For Java, int i is nine. Okay, fine. So It is not printing the values. For int i is equal to 10. I, what is I? Tell me first 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay. That means first I is equal to 10. 10 is equal to greater than. Yes, correct. Continue. Then 9, 8, 5, 8, 7, 4, whatever. Yes, correct. So right, uh, when you are giving that uh, 
when you are giving your uh, conditions, make sure that you are giving the right condition. Okay? Fine? Okay. One second guys. Only one minute. Okay, so this is how you can like right, you can also use your uh, decrement operators or increment operators, you can use that. Okay, so we are done with that for loops, we are done with your uh, do while loops. These two loops are enough for me. Okay, these two loops are enough for me. Okay, fine. Now, what I want to do is, I want to start with arrays. See, every time, till now what we are doing is, every time we are trying to store only one value at a time. That means, every time what you are doing, j is equal to 1, i is equal to 5, like this. So, every time you are trying to store only one value at a time. But, just imagine that you want to store like 100 values. If you want to store 100 values, you cannot create 100 variables. Because then, all the 100 variables means it will occupy a lot of space. That is not practical. For that reason only, your arrays comes into picture. Okay. Arrays is nothing but whenever if you want to store multiple values. Store multiple values. That means, right, now here when I say that A is equal to 10 or B is equal to 20, I can store only one value. But, right, this is not the case, right, when it comes to the real time. I, I may want to, like, store n number of values in a single place. Then it will, uh, and then your arrays will come into picture. Here the definition is, arrays is nothing but it is used to store the multiple data of the same data type. That means, here, like, if I'm creating one array, I can store all the values of integers. You can store the multiple values of same data type. Remember, same data type. That is important. Okay? Fine. Now, same data type. Okay? Arrays. Okay. So, where is... Hmm. So arrays, right? Where is my arrays? Now I wanted to work with arrays, right? I wanted to work with arrays. So working with arrays also is easy. As I said, right, what you have to do is you have to create your array, right? So if you want to create your array, right, then what you have to do is you have to use your uh, this one, this symbol. This symbol. So I'll say that month, see month is nothing but John Feb March April May June like this. That means what you are trying to do is, right, I told you whenever if you want to store the same, store the values of same data type, same data type. So here, right, all are strings only. 
all are strings and I wanted to and I wanted to store right I wanted to store in my array then I can say that you can uh, give that data type what kind of data you are storing here I wanted to store my string you can say that string data type and you can give your uh, name here and oh, and as I said when you say that string uh, arrays you have to use your square brackets that means now month 0 will be jan always your arrays will start from uh, your arrays will start from month your arrays will start from the value is 0 the value is value is month of zero. That means what it will do? It will print your uh, first value. What it will do? It will print your January. It will print your because right when you say that right array it will take the first value. First value will be always starts in your uh, array as zero only. Remember this zero. Okay. Please let me know if you have any doubts. The value is mm -hmm. month of one. Then it will it will print your it will print your uh, this one month one month two and so on. Okay, fine. So right here, right every time, like right printing the value individually. It is not practical. Okay, something problem. Some syntax somewhere. This month of okay. So now what it will see? Nicely it will print the value. But right here, right, printing the value like right one by one and all right, it is not practical. Right. If I'm having just imagine that here, right, I'm having like uh, hundreds of values, right? When I'm having hundreds of values, how it is possible to print each and every value? That is not practical. So printing that uh, each and everything. <laughs> printing each and every value is not at all practical so what I will do here is right now what I will do is instead of printing my value like this I can have a simple for loop and one more thing is whenever if you are working with your arrays right if you are, this is called one dimensional array by the way and right, this is called your one dimensional array one dimensional array one dimensional array that means right you are storing only one value not two values you are storing only one value so it will be like this one dimension is nothing but you are storing only one value so if you're having this like this, so here right you are storing this is one, this is two, like this. So what you are doing, you are you are you are storing one value in your each and every array, one dimensional array. Now I don't want to like write, I don't want to print the values like this. I want to use my for loop. Let's see, is it possible to use the for loop for this? And one more thing, when you are playing with your uh, arrays, if you want, what you can do is you can also get your length of this array, length of array. So int len length. So you can get your length of this array. Like right? if you want, you can get your length of this array. 
my length of the array is length of the array is length of the array is LEN. See that means right you can ask me like how I can use while writing the selenium program. Just imagine that like right in one of the drop down you are having uh, 10 values and I wanted to use all those 10 values. Then what you can do? You can get all the 10 values and you can store in an array and you can use all the values for in your script. That is the process. Now let's see whether it will work or not. Run it. See length of the array is 12. That means you are having 12 values. Now just imagine that I wanted to print all these values. Is it possible? Yes. For loop in I told you like right uh, array will start from 0 i less than length my condition is this one i less than length and then i plus plus i plus plus I want to print the value I wanted to print the values mm, what we will do value of the month is value of the month is month of i month of i that means now what it will do if i is equal to 0 month of 0 it will print i is equal to 1 month of 1 it will print and so on run this See, all the values are properly printing. If you want, I can clear it and run it. See, I know that guys, right, you guys are freshers, but right, I'm going very slowly. Please try to catch the points. If you have doubts, let me know and do your practice. And you will be easily getting your Selenium job. I'm, I'm honestly saying because Selenium professionals are right less in the market right now. And if you know a little bit about your Java and then if you know about your Selenium, then things will be easy like this. Okay, clear how to work with your uh, array. Fine, this is how you can work with your array. And one more way, right? You can also define your array is one more way also you can define your array. And two-dimensional array I will talk tomorrow because today I got tired. So, here one more way also you can say like this. Int salary. So what is the data type, right? What is the data type? That is the first thing, right? First, what you have to do is always, right? Always what you have to do is when you are writing your, uh, what is that, uh, arrays, right? First thing what you have to do is, arrays, uh, okay. Right, first what you have to do, right? Whenever if you are, uh, working with your arrays right always this arrays will be prefixed with your data types now earlier when you want to write your data you will say like this int a is equal to 10 that means right this is your uh, single variable but here i wanted to store the variables of same data type then you can use your array then you can say that int you can you can give the data type followed by your array symbol and whatever that variable name. You can, you, you can give like this. Okay. New int of what is the size? What is the size you are looking? What is the size you are looking? What is the size you are looking? Like this. This is how you can define an array. If you want, you can also define an array. That means you are defining an array called salary with 10 items. And one more thing is, right? Whenever if you are declaring your arrays, you can provide the size. You can provide the size, how many values you are expecting. Right? You can give like this. Now what you can do? Now you can say that salary of 0. So you can give the values. So first person salary is so and so. First person salary is so and so. Second person salary is so and so. Third person salary is so and so. Third person salary is so and so. 
So you can you can that means what you are trying to do. That means here right you are creating an array of size 10 and each and every what do you call uh, each and every location that means salary 0 that means first item will contain so and so value so that whenever you want you can use all these values salary of 3 like this ok let me copy paste this now whichever the size you need you need like just simply define it like this okay like this now now if you want to print the same values you can do the same thing now in i is equal to 0 int i is uh, less than salary dot salary make sure that you are in the right hand salary dot length length i plus plus so this is how you can now uh, like right work with your single dimensional array right this is how you can work with your single dimensional array this is how to work with your single dimensional array Here. this is how you can work with your single dimension array see oh, oh, oh here right I give all the values okay that is why it is printing whatever the value is there it is printing as it is so this is how you can work with your uh, single dimensional arrays okay clear let me know if you have any doubts with these loops and your uh, single dimensional arrays. See, please let me know if you have any doubts in these loops and single dimensional arrays. If you are good, so what is my next intention is I want to work with your uh, double dimensional arrays, right? Once the double dimensional arrays is over, then I need to discuss about the methods. Once methods is done, then your uh, Java basic programming is done then we need to jump into object oriented programming that is the plan okay